Hello friends, Michael Stemps here. We're going to go over the cards for you to consider to play in Crick coming out with uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. This includes cards from the main set, Commander products. First up, we have Insatiable Avarice, one black mana, Sorcery, and it has Spree, so it has one more additional cost. So you add two generic onto that, you get a Switch Library for a card, shuffle it, shuffle the library, put that card on top. So basically kind of like Bad Imperial Seal for three mana. Or add two black, so three black in total, target player draws three cards and loses three life. Now, this is really cool and crick because you can pay six life and then three life nine probably should have and you get to draw three cards so i think that's pretty good and if you have extra mana spare you can tutor as well so i think this will probably slot into a lot of crick decks especially if you're trying to do like more degenerate kind of combo -y stuff next up we have arid archway land desert comes into play tap enters the battlefield return a land you control to its owner's hand this text is not super relevant if another desert was returned this way surveil so one not advocating you play a lot of deserts, but it taps for two colorless. I think in kind of lower power level decks, Karus are pretty good, lands that tap for two mana, even if they're a little slow. So, you know, this is 20 cents, right? If you're not loaded with like mana crypts, vaults, grim tutors, ancient tomb, city of traders, all that pricey fast mana, I think this is worth slotting into your deck. Up next, we have Conduit Pylons, Land Desert, enters the battlefield, Surveil 1, taps for colorless, and one generic tap, add one man of any color. I'm just a real big fan of uh, playing Surveil 1, Scry 1 lands in Crick, especially if you're not opting for the Urbor, Cabal Coffers, or like 35 Swamp kind of approach. I just think it's a good way to play kind of a, a lower land count while being able to keep a wider range of opening hands, like two lands, and you can Surveil to what you need. So this is a bit of a personal preference. I'm going to be picking up a foil copy of this. And yeah, if that's how you build your quick mana base with more colorless lands and utility, I think this is pretty good. Our fourth card up is Shoot the Sheriff, one generic, one black, instant, destroy target, non-outlaw creature. So outlaws are assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, and warlocks. Everyone else is fair game. This is just kind of like another interesting Doomblade variant. I, I haven't run the numbers. I don't I don't know off the top of my head what are the primary outlaws that you know you want to kill that this won't be able to kill, but I think this is worth considering. If you found value in this so far, I'd appreciate it if you Doombladed that like and subscribe button for more magic, card game, and RPG goodness. And if you'd like to support me further, surveil my eBay store, Reckless Tempest, for sweet Magic the Gathering cards. Next up, we have uh, Karavik the Punisher, one generic, two black, legendary human warlock, so is an outlaw. Whenever you commit a crime, and committing crime is targeting opponents, anything they control and or cards in a graveyard is a crime, copies of permanent spells become tokens. So, whenever you commit crime, exile up to one target black card from your graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy, you must pay mana, you have to pay mana, Unless it specifies otherwise with cards, sometimes people mess this up. And if you do, you lose two life, three mana. So this really is dependent on how easy your deck is at committing crimes. If you're more of a control version, playing spot removal, this can get kind of silly. Admittedly, it doesn't go infinitely, but being able to copy like Dark Rituals and then pay two life to, to cast them, right? Because Crick will still replace the black symbol with a Phyrexian black. <clears throat> this might let you pop off, so... I think this is kind of worth considering. It's three bucks. It'll probably go down even lower. I kind of like the normal art a little more. It's pretty sweet, this uh, person getting burnt up. Next up, we have a uh, Tiny Bones, the Pickpocket, one black, legendary creature, skeleton rogue, death touch. It's a one one. Whenever Tiny Bones deals combat damage to a player, you may cast target non land permanent from that player's graveyard, and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. Yeah, this isn't obviously as good as, say, in a Tiny Bones deck in Crick, but if you have Discard, you know, or if other people are blowing stuff up, you might be able to sneak, sneak in hits, cast someone's Soul Ring or whatever. I'm not saying you should, like, 100% slot this in, but, again, worth, worth considering. It's no... Insatiable Avarice, which I do think, like, should slot into a lot of Kirk decks. Next up, we have Rush of Dread, one generic, two black, sorcery, spree. You pay the three mana, and then for one more, target player sacrifices half the creatures they control, round it up. Two generic, target opponent discards half the cards in their hand, round it up. And two, two generic, target opponent loses half their life, round it up. I think this is an interesting finisher card, especially if you have some of the cards that combo with your opponent losing half their life. I don't remember off the top of my head what they are. They do exist, I swear. Yeah, so this is probably more of like a controlling build you probably want to look at, 
but also just spending two mana to blow up half your opponent's creatures or make him discard half their hand or three mana to make him discard the hand. These are pretty, this is pretty cheap to do this. And also if you multiple spree, you can target different opponents with different effects. So I think this might be like an interesting tutor target. Probably not as good as Invoke Despair because that card's a little nutty, but this does also have a combo kill potential. Next up we have Harvester of Misery. Uh, three generic, two black for a five four spirit creature menace. Enters the battlefield. Other creatures get minus two minus two until end of turn. So a little bit of massacre wormness doesn't have the opponent losing two life uh, passive ability. But interesting enough, as a ability, uh, one generic, one black. Discard this from your hand. Target creature gets minus two minus two until end of turn. I think this is really interesting and I'll, as a kind of a bad disfigure but also gives you a backdoor option of just being able to reanimate it later on in the game, do the sweeper again. I just think this is like a really versatile card and I think it might I think it might make a cuts in a lot of decks just because um just having the modal ability of cards is like very interesting, right? Like instead of like having a hard time maybe fitting on all the spot removal spells you want and the massacre worm this kind of does a bit of both so you can shave one of them while still being able to play all the other sweet spells you want. Though obviously it is much weaker than massacre worm because your opponents don't lose two life every time a creature dies. So there are trade-offs. Now this is just kind of a weirder card. Hollow Marauder, six generic, one black, four two, Spectre Rogue. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard, so this one make the cut in a lot of correct decks. Uh, flying, when this enters the battlefield, any number of target opponents each discard a card. For each of those opponents who didn't discard a card with man mana value 4 or greater, draw a card. So, you play it, everyone discards a card. I feel there's some kind of nonsense here that could happen with, like, Recursion. Unfortunately, it's a Spectre Rogue. It's not like a zombie or something, so it's going to be harder to keep recurring from the graveyard. Maybe with, like, Chainer, Dementia Mat, like, uh, Chainer, the Dementia Guy, the five mana one, and a Sack Outlet. You could kind of keep recurring this a few times, make everyone discard the card, and you draw a lot of cards. Obviously, it'll pay a lot of life doing this. Might, might do some weird kooky things. We have Sword of Wealth and Power, three generic, Artifact Equipment, Equipped creature gets 2-2 and protection from instant sand sorceries. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. When you cast your next instant or sorcery this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Two life, or no, two mana to equip. Pretty pricey right now, so I'd probably recommend holding off, but I do think this probably has like a weird drop rate. Yeah, I don't know, just like if you're more of a Voltron kind of quick deck, this is pretty good. Provides uh, protection from a good amount of removal spells and makes treasures if you hit them, but also being able to like duplicate uh, tutors or invoke despairs or stuff like that can be pretty pretty crazy, honestly. Lost GT, one generic, one to equip, legendary artifact equipment. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage, put a charge counter on this and then remove it. Remove a counter, choose one untapped target land, target creature can't block this turn, or put a 1-1 one, one counter on equipped creature. I think this is maybe potentially a little interesting, again, if you're more of like a uh, Voltron style crick deck, right? You're trying to make him super big and just beat the crap out of your opponents with him. And you have Urza Saga, therefore you can kind of tutor this up. I think how you would potentially break this card is more with the untapped target land ability that I think has the highest upside if you have things like Cabal Coffers, Nectho Shrine to the Gods, maybe Lake of the Dead, you can make a lot of mana in a turn and then do very fair balance things with all that extra mana on top of paying life for things. I don't... Anik is like fine and I think putting one, a 1-1 one -one counter on Crick is probably the least important one just because he already gets juiced when you play a lot of spells. I have misplaced this card, this is from Outlaws, uh, Forsaken Miner, 1 black, 2-2 two, two, Skeleton Rogue, Forsaken Miner can't block, whenever you commit a crime, you may pay black. If you do, return Forsaken Miner from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is an interesting piece with, interesting combo piece with Phyrexian Altar, you know, 3, three generic artifacts, sacrifice a creature, add 1 mana of any color, so we'll add black, and Blood Artist, Blood Artist, 2 mana, Vampire. Whenever a Blood Artist or another creature dies, target a player loses one life and you gain one life, which, that targeting, is a crime. You are targeting an opponent. So you sacrifice Forsaken Miner to your Phyrexian Altar, add a black. This trigger goes on the stack. You target an opponent. You have now committed a crime. You may now pay that black mana to return Forsaken Miner to play. Any opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So this is an infinite loop where you can go 
and mill everyone and drain everyone out. Worth considering. Um, it doesn't really utilize Crick's special ability of replacing things with Phyrexian mana, but hey, right, that's, uh, <laughs> can't, can't have them all. Next up we have Kissa, the Hellraiser, 3 generic, 2 black, legendary creature, human warlock, 4-4. Four, four. <clears throat> ward 2, war, so it has ward 2 generic mana and pay 2 life. Skeletons and zombies you control get 1-1 one, one and have menace. And whenever you commit a crime, I really wish they put this, whenever you... Once per turn, whenever you commit a crime. I, I, I wish that's how it was formatted. But anyways, you make two, 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 black, blue, rogue, zombie creature tokens. Oh, God, fire cards are so ridiculous. So essentially to me, kind of where my brain goes is like, I compare this to ye olde grave titan. Six mana, six, six, death touch, makes two zombies when it comes into play and when it attacks. So for one mana less, you're trading some of the power, but it is harder to remove, right? You have to pay ward, and it pumps your stuff. Whenever you commit crimes, you just get things once per turn. So in theory, this could outpace uh, Grave Titan. It's kind of a worse attacker. I think you'd probably want this in more of a controlling quick deck, or maybe if you have more zombie synergies or skeletons. Like, it's, it's not, like, super high synergy. But again, there's a lot going on here. Technically, this wasn't released with Outlaws of Thunder Junction, but uh, I kind of missed it because I didn't do a March of the Machine video. I just think it's kind of interesting. Um, Corrupted Conviction, one black mana, instant, is an additional cost, sacrifice a creature, and you draw two cards. I just think this is kind of interesting in some Kirk decks because this is a zero mana play where you can sack something and get value. So even if they kill your Kirk or whatever, or they're trying to kill your Kirk, you know, just sack it, get two go on with the game obviously zero mana effectively zero mana is much easier than uh deadly dispute or i forget the name of the one where it's uh one generic one black you sack a thing and you get a treasure right you can just always do this i i kind of like having just like zero mana tricks up with quick it's kind of neat servant of the stinger this is this is the thing you're gonna have to do a lot of work for one generic one black human warlock one three death touch never deals combat damage to a player if you commit a crime this turn you may sacrifice Servant of the Stinger. If you do, search your library for a card, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Much worse Demonic Tutor, obviously, but, you know, you can only run one Demonic Tutor. If your deck commits crimes very easily, you know, hey, this could be a good pickup for you, just because it is, you know, a bad Demonic Tutor. Next up, we have Unscrupulous Contractor, two generic, one black. Human Assassin, 3-2. When this enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. If you do, target player draws two cards and loses two life. And it has plot, two generic, two black. You may pay this and exile this card from your hand. Cast it as a sorcery on a later turn without paying its mana cost. Plot only as a sorcery. This is just like, I like cards like Read the Bones or whatever. So maybe if you're playing kind of a more creature sack, sack version of Crick, you know. This might slot in. It's pretty narrow. Yeah. And that's it for cards I found interesting for Crick coming out in Outlaws of Thunder Junction. If I miss anything, let me know in the comments. I do think Insatiable Avarice is kind of a, the big one, right? This this card can kind of do some silly stuff, in my opinion. Followed probably by... Oh, no. Oh, no. Just, just this card. This card's really good. So, yeah. If you enjoyed the content, click like. See you soon.